Hey guys, uh, just about to make some supper and I figured I'd uh, make a tutorial out of it. Uh, today's uh, tutorial is going to be on my, something I used to make it when I had had the restaurant uh, uh, that uh, I liked and it was actually somewhat popular when I was at the Royal Albert. Uh, it's called pork and pasta aioli. Uh, uh, no, pork and pasta garlic aioli. Uh, everything, uh, the, the, going to be doing everything from scratch including the pasta so there's going to be a few steps as well as the aioli. The, uh, uh, I blend that up with 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 uh, with the cloves of garlic and uh, extra virgin olive oil. I haven't got any made, so I'll have to make some of that too. So stay tuned, and we'll uh, get this together, and uh, you'll learn something new. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to start off with making the pasta. So uh, right here, uh, I've got a, I got out the bad boy. I've got to get one of these. Uh, uh, in here, I've already got, I'm going to make whole wheat pasta. I I prefer it. It has much better texture, a little bit more flavor. Uh, so I've got two cups of whole wheat pasta in the bowl already, and here I've got three eggs. I'm gonna add some salt, a couple shakes. Uh, gonna add the three eggs, and in here I've got uh, uh, oregano and garlic, dry spice. Put that in there. And uh, I'm gonna shake some of this in here when I got this other arm back instead of holding that. So if you don't see me do it, I've done it, don't worry. But before I do that, I'm going to put on the paddle. Clean hands. Okay, uh, I'm gonna like, dim the, get the, the pepper in there, give this a blend and I'll be right back with you. Okay, here we got the, uh, our pasta dough's ready. Well, not ready, it's, it's uh, 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 finished being worked, I guess. Now what it's got to do is sit and relax, like uh, like something a lot of people should try. Just relax for a good 15-20 minutes. So while that's happening, we're, we're going to prepare our, our chops. I'm going to wrap this up, put it in the fridge, let it uh, relax, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I cut the, uh, uh, four chops here. They're roughly, I cut them about an inch thick. So uh, uh, the way I do the, the, uh, the way I'm going to do these chops this time is a, a two two part method. Uh, uh, another thing bef before you start doing the chops, the first thing you should be doing is setting a, setting your oven to broil and high, so that gets to temperature by the time you need it. So uh, uh, like I said, it's a two two step system. First part is going to be searing it in the pan, and what you're going to do is get every all chops uh, uh, the all the outer surface has to have a nice sear on it. You don't, you know, you're not cooking it in the pan. You're just searing it in the pan. All the cook, most of the cooking is going to happen in, in the oven. But uh, when you sear, the, the, if you have a complete sear around the whole exterior of the chop, as that cooks, that's going to keep all the moisture in, and you're going to have the juiciest chop you've ever had in your life. But before we get this on the pan and start searing, what you need to do is the the side that's going to go into the pan first and touch the surface of the pan. You want to season that before you put it in. Most people will put it in and season the top and then flip it over and then it's already seared. This doesn't take, absorb spice very well after you've already seared it. So you're going to spice it before you put it in the pan. And then you'll, then you'll, then you'll season the top layer that's, that once it's in the pan. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get my pan ready and I'll be back with you. Hey guys, okay, I got my pan on now. The, uh, uh, it's on, it's on pretty high. It's on, actually it's on, it's on high heat, like max heat. Uh, when, when I'm gonna put some olive oil in there. Uh, gonna let that heat up. Let that olive oil heat up a bit. And uh, while it's doing that, I just want to show you. Uh, that's the pork chops. So you can't be shy in the seasoning. Pork loves pepper. Remember that. Pork loves pepper. If you're gonna make a pork chop, you gotta have the pepper or get out of here. So I'm gonna, I'm, uh, once this is hot enough, I'm gonna drop this side, the top side down, and then I'll season the top, and then I'll have a pair of tongs and, and I'll work all the sides, make sure all the exterior surface it has a nice sear in it before it goes into the oven. Okay, once I get that started, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back with you. Okay guys, I just got my pan heating up, and uh, yeah, a little episode while uh, I was away. Can't find my tongs. Like, <laughs> where are they? I don't, like, I'm the only one that cooks in here. And, uh, yeah, it's not like I took them with me when I left. But anyway, uh, I dug up these for, the, I usually use them barbecuing. That's what that'll have to do. Uh, and as, as I was looking for my tongs, it, 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 it occurred to me I should mention why uh, uh, I specifically use tongs for this. When you're searing the meat, 
you're, you're not, the purpose of searing the meat is to seal it in. So if you're using a fork and flipping it over, you're, you're basically uh, uh, giving holes for, 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 for juices to escape. So you don't want to do that. Uh, this is looking hot enough now. So uh, yeah, that's another thing. When you put in meat into your pan, this is what it should sound like. Actually, it could have been a bit hotter, but you, you want to have a sizzle for sure. Like, uh, it's, uh, you, you know the old saying, cold pan, cold heart. Don't want to have a cold heart now. So, yeah, we got these in here. So, now I'm going to season this side here. Just a, a little uh, kosher salt. And, uh... I cracked the pepper, I need another hand for that, so again, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to get this all seared up, and then uh, I'll show them to you what they're supposed to look like, and then, and then we're going to see the oven, so I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back, uh, I got this all, I got these all seared nicely. Nowhere should you see any pink of any any sort, like, uh, uh, everything should be browned on, on the whole exterior surface, that's what you want. And, the, and this pan here, you're not going to want to clean that, you're going to use that. There's a lot of flavor in this pan for, uh, from the meat itself. Uh, uh, we're, what we're gonna do is gonna keep all those juices in there and we'll saute some mushrooms and onions in there that can go with the pork chops after they're done. Okay, my, I got my oven preheated to high, uh, broil high, so now we're just gonna take these, put these in the oven, we're gonna time it for seven minutes. 10 minutes, yeah, 10 minutes. And then, uh, 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 well, that's going for 10 minutes, I'm gonna get back to the pasta, I'm gonna put on some water, get, get that boiling, and then we're gonna make some pasta. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, back with my pasta. This is nice and set. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this uh, cut into four. Four segments like this. And each one of these I'm going to work, uh, uh, work independently. So we'll start with uh, one here. We're going to get this piece all set to go into... This is a two-step process again because we're making. We're going to make a spaghetti pasta, so I'm going to need the spaghetti cutter, which I'll use uh, after the after the first uh, 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 pass, which will go through just a, a flat a flat noodle. So this will get it to the to, to the uh, uh, grade we want, and then once once we get it to to, to the to the uh, what do you call that uh, uh, thickness or gauge. Uh, once we get it to the right gauge through this, then we'll pass it through the spaghetti cutter and then we'll have our pasta. We'll just get, that'll go straight into the salted water. So I'm going to hook this up, get, to start to get this ready, and I'll show you how it's, where, where it should be at before you start passing it through here. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, I'm back. Okay, uh, the first section I got, I, I, I got to about this thickness here with just a rolling pin. But now that's suitable. It saves me a bit of time passing it through, through the... Uh, uh, the the kitchen aid, but uh, it's pretty simple. After this, you know, I got this set to uh, uh, three. It goes from ten to zero or one. I got it set to three now. So you see, it's it's fairly easy. Easy. I need two hands for this. So I'll just, I'm just gonna go through there. When I get it like that, I usually fold it in half. Directly in half, like that. And then I'm going to pass it through like that again. Okay, I've only got, I'm using my one hand here, so I can do a better job if I have two hands, but now I'm going to fold it in half again. That's ready for the spaghetti cutter. I'll do that three more times. I'll be right back. Okay, while we're waiting for the uh, the water to boil, I'm going to make the, the 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 garlic aioli for for the for the pasta. In in, in my blender, I've got just under a full bulb of garlic, and I'm going to add some olive oil, and I'm just going to mix that till it's smooth. Till all the you can, you, like the, the the garlic should be you, you, you shouldn't be able to see any. A uh, chunk of garlic should be smooth. So, 
So there you go. I'm going I'm to give that a mix until it's the consistency that I want and I'll be right back. That's our garlic aioli cream. Good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I got the, the water as a boil. And uh, when you, when, whenever you boil water for pasta, you know, you, you got to put salt. It's got to be salty. I don't mean just, I mean not just salty. It's like, holy fuck, is that ever fucking salty salt? So, yeah, that's what you want before you put the pasta in. I'm going to clean up this area and get ready to, to cut it in pasta, and then we'll put it in the water. I'll be right back. Okay, now we're switching out our, our uh, cutters. That's going to go in. One hand, and again, you usually have two hands for this, but. That's just going to go right in the water. Do that three more times, and I'll be right back. Okay, the pork chops have come out of the oven. Looking golden delicious. And the pasta is pretty much done. The thing about uh, uh, making fresh pasta, if you, if you take, took, take a look at the time it, it takes to cook uh, uh, dry pasta, store what, and, and to make it, it takes about the same amount of time, except uh, uh, with uh, fresh pasta you're putting more time into actually making the pasta, less time into cooking it, it only takes about a minute to, to two minutes to cook it, where it's going to take 10-15 minutes for a dry pasta, and, but all you're doing is putting it in a pot and letting it go. So that's how you want to spend your time. Okay, I'm going to drain this off. And prepare a few more things and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, been pretty busy since I saw you last. Uh, okay, this is the pasta. I, I, I've uh, uh, added about three quarters of cups of the, the garlic aioli. Uh, and now I'm going to add in here, I've got uh, Parmesan, grated Parmesan cheese with uh, some oregano. Er, 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 chef, uh, uh, it's, Chefnod spinach and some diced tomatoes. One handed again. Okay, I'm gonna give that a mix and I'll be right back. Hey guys, uh, we, we got the pork and the pasta going, so now we're gonna need a vegetable with that. I decided to make asparagus. So, what I got in here, I, I, I put in the rest of that garlic mixture with oil. Uh, and uh, coated them with that as well. I use uh, 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 some oregano, salt, pepper. I usually have lemon pepper, but I, for some reason I can't seem to find my lemon pepper. So what I did was I zested a lemon on there, and uh, I'll, I'll put some lemon juice on after after it's prepared and when it's ready to be eaten. So this is going to go to the oven for again another seven minutes. Okay, I'll be back back with you. Hey guys, well we're back and it looks like we have everything done. Uh, here we go. That looks good. Yeah, uh, you should try this recipe. It's really good, and uh, yeah, it's not that hard. If you take, if you slow things down, take things one by one, step by step, it's real easy. And if you do it right, you're gonna love it. It's gonna taste great. Okay, thanks a lot.